A good morning. Happy Thursday. You are looking live over Dublin at 630 on this November the 3rd. I'm Caitlin Heck and I'm Juan Reese. I'm happy we started on Dublin. You know the Irish. Good luck because I have a feeling Central Georgia. You're going to have a great Thursday. Hey, we are claiming it right now. Alex forecast already shaping up to be good. That's right. And on the temperature map, we got a whole lot of green. So we're just keeping the theme going. 52 in Warner Robins, 57 in Dublin, 58 in Soperton, 55 in Gray and 57 in Forsyth this morning. The radar picture, no rain to speak of out there as expected this morning, but we do have a little bit of fog as you head down towards Dodge County, moving south into Ben Hill County, also clipping Wilcox County there. So if you know of any areas that are fog prone, maybe allow a few extra minutes uh, on the roads this morning as you could run into some there. The satellite and radar picture quiet across the southeast this morning. Some rain off the Carolina coast, 50s, 40s, 60s, 70s. It's all on the board here. 71 in Houston, the warm spot. Looks like the cool spot is 48 in Nashville this morning. Now, as you head out the door, look for a high temperature right around 79 later on this afternoon. Our average high is 78, so we're or 73, excuse me. We are above average in terms of the temperatures today. Sunrise comes your way this morning about 754. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll talk about clouds for the weekend and rain possible late on Saturday. I've got the details of that coming up here in just a few minutes. Looking out for each other again. Seeing ourselves as we the people, not as entrenched enemies. Election day now just five days away. That's right, right around the corner. President Joe Biden took the stage last night in a primetime address speaking out against political violence. He says he was inspired to do so after an intruder broke into the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's home and attacked her husband. During the address, the president once again warned about a threat to democracy, saying hundreds of Republican candidates led by former President Donald Trump questioned the integrity of American elections. Lies of conspiracy and malice, lies repeated over and over to generate a cycle of anger, hate, vitriol, and even violence. Well, President Biden says he hopes voters will make protecting democracy and accepting election results a key factor when deciding who to vote for. Well, you may get a surprise when you go to vote. The Secretary of State's office says if someone challenged your voting status, it's not something that would show up on the state's My Voter page. Under Georgia's voting law, if a voter's eligibility is challenged, it is the responsibility of the local elections board to first notify the voter about the challenge and provide a public hearing date. Then notify all parties of the local election board's final decision. The Secretary of State's office says if you find out you've been challenged when you get to the polls, you have two options. Depending on the county, some will sign a form confirming your eligibility and vote using a regular ballot. Others may get you to use a provisional ballot and return it by November 14th to prove your eligibility and get your vote counted. As you can imagine, the candidates for the governor's race are on the move. Today, Governor Brian Kemp is campaigning with Arizona Governor Doug Ducey and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie on Friday. And today, Democratic candidate for Governor Stacey Abrams is going to be coming to Macon. She's going to be at the Tubman Museum as part of her One Georgia Bus Tour. So tomorrow is the last day for early voting, and we also want to make sure you have the latest information you need before heading to the polls next Tuesday. Our November 2022 election guide is live on our website at 13WMAZ.com. There you can find key dates and races, learn about different ways to vote, and so much more. We can also send that election guide directly to your phone. All you have to do is just text the word VOTE to 478-752-1309. And coming up today on 13 WMAZ at 530, we are dedicating a half hour of coverage to bring you everything you need to know ahead of Election Day. From finding your polling place to how your vote is counted, we'll also introduce you to our election night panelists and how we're tracking votes county by county. So make sure you join us today at 530 right here on 13 WMAZ. Well, online gamblers are winning thousands on accurately predicting elections. Recent studies found these folks making bets tend to be more accurate than professional pollsters. It's the kind of thing where if you're into this stuff and you're willing to follow the news and you have a decent head for numbers, um, you can get good at it. And guess what? Online bettors, they're throwing stacks of money at Georgia's election, particularly on who's gonna win the Georgia Senate seat. So tonight at 11, Ashlyn Webb is taking a closer look at the political betting industry. It's 635 breaking news from overnight. Bibb County investigators are looking into a deadly double shooting that happened early this morning. And deputies found a man shot outside of a home and another man inside. This is video from the 3500 block of Morris Avenue right off Mumford Road. 
When deputies got there, they found a 61 year old man shot out in the yard and a 41 year old man shot inside the home. Both men died at a hospital. We'll get their names once their families are notified. Investigators closed off the street while they processed the crime scene, but it should be open again now. Now, if you have any information on this case, you should reach out to the Macon Regional Crime Stoppers. That number it's 1-877-68-CRIME. Once again, you see that number. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. It's 1-877-68-CRIME. A Mansfield Energy, a major fuel delivery provider, issued a supply alert warning about an incoming diesel fuel shortage. They predict the shortage will cause problems throughout the southeast. The supply alert says, quote, poor pipeline shipping economics and historically low diesel inventories are combining to cause shortages in various markets. Now, one of the groups that would feel this, farmers. Georgia Ag Commissioner Gary Black says because diesel is an important building block for the economy, this would cause fuel prices to rise. When energy prices up, you naturally see the cost of goods, all consumer goods, rising. We're already seeing that at the grocery store. Uh, I, I think we'll see it across the, the the shelf when it comes to consumer goods for Christmas, and and that's just a uh, it's, it's just an unfortunate fact. Now, not all oil refineries are experiencing this problem. 13 WMAZ asked Manfield Energy how long the shortage could last. By email, a spokesman said, "If we have a cold winter and the European Union goes ahead with its embargo of Russian diesel, quote, we might see issues throughout the winter." 637 right now the intersection of Cotton Avenue and 2nd Street is closed. Yesterday, Megan Bibb leaders broke ground on the Cotton Avenue Park expansion. Alex Morrison with Megan Bibb County says for the next six to eight weeks, they'll add green space and benches to invite more people to interact with businesses and one another. The Otis Redding Foundation faces out on this trip. You see it there. And Justin Andrews says they could use this space for so many things. Maybe before our center gets built, we could talk about some outdoor music lessons or, or something like that. Um, maybe have our own little concert in the park on our first Friday and showcase the kids and their talent. Um, so possibilities are endless. Morrison says the Plaza Extension is also an investment into black owned businesses. Cotton Avenue was once Macon's historic black business district and several others now sit along that strip. Well, Bibb County's district attorney says she has some questions for members of the Macon Water Authority. She's invited them to meet with her about Chairman Sam Hart's complaints about possible illegal meetings and other misconduct. By email, DA Anita Reynolds Howards told the board members the interviews are voluntary. She advises, quote, you might want to have your attorney present. Howard sent that email yesterday to all seven authority members, including Hart. She suggested meeting times on Friday, next Monday or Tuesday. Last week, Hart told us some board members may have met directly with employees, which violates bylaws or discuss board business privately. He requested Howard to investigate. So far, no other authority members have responded publicly to Hart's comments. All right, now we have an update to a story we brought you back in September. That's when bib commissioners made it easier to request more streetlights in neighborhoods. Well, now some make it, I'd say it's paying off after commission approved several new lights. Barbara Neely's lived in her East Macon neighborhood for almost 50 years. She turned in the application just after commissioners changed the request process. Neely says you can go through the county's C-Click Fix website to request the lights. Tuesday, commissioners approved a new street light in her neighborhood. Neely says it is a welcome addition to keep pedestrians safe. We have children going to school in the mornings. Uh, time is about to change. It's about to fall back. So we have children who are going to the bus stops. Um, so we need some lights. We have also those who walk early in the morning in the community. Neely says the process was very easy and she says if you're on the fence, just go ahead and apply. Coming up on 13 WMAZ Morning. Being an artist and being forefront, it's a little scary at times, but it's also ex exhilarating. Our morning reporter TJ Anthony shares the story of one making artist and the path she's on to advance her solo artist career. There are many reasons to love rainfall, but most people especially love rain for its wonderful smell. Today I'll break down the meteorology and chemistry that goes into the smell of rain. All right, now it is 640. We have not seen much rain in quite a while. We have not, but first off this morning, Alex always does these phenomenal school mm -hmm. visits. We oh. want to give a shout out to all the students and educators in Monroe County. Yes. I heard you paid them a visit yesterday. Yesterday at Hubbard Elementary, the fourth ah. graders up there, we talked about tornadoes, hurricanes, Ooh. the difference between watches and warnings, and a lot of them knew where Monroe County was on a map. So some great uh, information there. 
Yes, A plus as well. So thanks to the students and teachers for having me up yesterday. Of course, we are starting to schedule school visits for next semester. So if you want us to pay your school a visit, just send me an email a Forbes at 13 WMAZ.com and you can reach me there. All right, let's take a live look over downtown this morning. We've got temperatures in the 50s, 51 there in Macon. As we look across the area, we've got 52 in Warner Robins, 53 in Perry, 57 up in Forsyth, up at Hubbard Elementary, 55 in Jeffersonville, and 55 in Gray this morning. Down to the south, looking at 50 in Eastman as well as in McRae this morning. The radar picture quiet out there, no rain to speak of this morning as expected, and really quiet across the southeast. Some rain off the Carolina coast. We've got 49 in Columbus, Mississippi, 48 up in Nashville on the the flip side of things, we've got 51 down in Houston with some sprinkles this morning. So a uh, wide range across the area. We've got as we roll through the day today, some cloud cover increasing as we roll through the morning hours. Here we are about the noon hour, especially areas east of Interstate 75, it looks like. And then once we roll our way through the afternoon, temperatures into the mid 70s before we cool off again tonight across central Georgia. Starting off tomorrow, similar to this morning. And once we roll our way into tomorrow afternoon, back into the 70s, upper 70s at that, and fantastic weather for football tomorrow night with temperatures down into the 60s, 65 and making 64 in Warner Robins right around 10 p.m. Then for Saturday, things begin to change a little bit. We're looking at overcast skies Saturday morning, some rain as you head back off towards the Savannah River. But then as we head through the day on Saturday, some rain will be possible, especially areas east of Interstate 75, it looks like. We're going with more clouds than sun on Saturday, so different from today and tomorrow. Then once we get to Sunday. It looks like the rain begins to wash away after some morning showers, but then once we get into the afternoon, we will be dry across central Georgia and dry for Monday as well. Election day comes your way on Tuesday. Maybe some showers down towards the south. This is a newer run of the GFS and notice there's not a whole lot of agreement here between the GFS and European though. So I've kept the rain chance off of Tuesday for now. Then once we get into Wednesday, it looks like we've got that better chance there. So we'll watch for trends on that. But as of now, I'm expecting election day to be dry here in central Georgia. Also this weekend, daylight saving time comes to a conclusion that happens early Sunday morning. The official change is going to be at 159.59. The clocks will jump back to one o'clock there. A reminder to replace your batteries and critical alarms. Now's the time to do that. 79 today, the average high is 73. Sunrise at 754. Here's your football Friday night forecast. Sunset tomorrow at 641. Because of time change next week, we're going to be talking about a sunset closer to 530 for uh, football Friday night. Otherwise, temperatures into the 60s. Here's your Tennessee Georgia forecast. Big game up there in Athens. 70s down into the 60s with maybe a sprinkle possible as we wrap things up there. And then for next week, a high temperature of 80 on Monday, 69 by next Wednesday. So flipping the script on the seven day with a 30% chance of rain.